as you think about who your friends are, how did you choose friends and how will you choose friends in the future? Do you know there is a biblical a way to choose friends? And Psalm 119 verse 63 says that my friends love the Lord and obey his commands. <laughs> that is the mm -hmm. biblical basis for friendship. Ooh, that's good. Loving that's God good. and obeying his commands. And so obeying his commands is really, uh, you have to have a covenant relationship with the Lord in order to obey his commands. And uh, once we have a covenant relationship with God, um, this is just an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Once we have a covenant relationship with God, we can have the same covenant relationship with other people. And that's where, uh, how we can relate to people in the body of Christ. It's not about their doctrine or their uh, church, what church they go to or what denomination they belong to. It's do you love God and do you obey his commandments? Amen. And Amen. then we can't, uh, we have no justification for labeling people and discriminating and having prejudice mm -hmm. because it's about loving God and obeying his commands. And it's not about us. It's about his covenant. He provided a covenant. He provided a way that we can be connected with him. And that's what we're going to be studying tonight. What you want to make sure that you choose good friends and you, Amen. you do Amen. it on. This is the basis. This is the biblical basis upon which our foundation upon which you can choose friends and they'll be good friends if they love God and obey his commands. Well, uh, first of all, I want you to know that there are friends talked about in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham was a friend of God on, and Moses was a friend of God. I want to share to read these verses about Abraham and Moses from Isaiah and Exodus. Isaiah 41, 8. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend. Oh, God called Abraham his friend. Mm -hmm. All right. And then in Exodus 33, 11, So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. Okay. So we see there are friends uh, talked about in the Bible. Uh, but those were old covenant people that were friends of God. Now let's think about new covenant because we're new covenant. We live under grace and not mm -hmm. under the law. Amen. And it says we are his friends. This is John 15, 15. I want you to read it. Mm -hmm. No longer do I call you slaves for the slave does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so let's let's go to another verse in, uh, in the New Testament and see what friendship is based on. And this is talking about Abraham and said why he was a friend of God. And it was this covenant relationship. God made a covenant with Abraham. He made promises to Abraham about his uh, offspring, about his descendants. He made these promises and Abraham believed what God said, and that was the basis for friendship. So the basis mm. for friendship is covenant. I want you to read this oh, in James. Like James 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him or accounted for him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the next point I want to make is that friendship is another word for love. And, Amen. And the Amen. way I came up with this was, uh, uh, I think Sunday night, uh, Sherry and I were in a motel and we were uh, headed back to our home in Athens and, uh, and, and we'd been traveling for, I don't know. 10 six, hours. Well, 10 well, hours. Well, 12 hours, actually. 12 hours in the air. 
and uh, we were uh, had gotten into a motel and still hadn't made it home, but we were on our way home. So that was Sunday night after spending 12 hours in the air and lots and lots of hours in the airport. Uh, and uh, Cherry just, uh, once she hit her head on the bed, she was asleep and I was making my way uh, to bed and I, I sat on the chair and I was thinking about this message for tonight and I was thinking about friendship and I, I was just talking about uh, friendship and, and I heard her say in her sleep, <laughs> Friendship is another word for love. And I thought, well, that's strange. And I looked at her and she just sound asleep. And we've, been, we've, been, we've been traveling for hours upon hours that day. And as soon as she hit her head on the pillow, she was asleep. But still, the Spirit of God was yeah, speaking. It was alive. It was alive to her, speaking to her. Awake. Through, it was awake. Through her spirit. And uh, they said, friendship is another word for love and i thought well let me see if i can find it in the bible and so what we just read was uh james 2 23 and that talks about love about abraham was a friend of god now i want to read it at the same verse tell them what verse it's james, james 2 23 but this time it's out of the passion, passion translation and first we called him the friend of god now let's look at what he said what he's called here so in this way the scripture was fulfilled because abraham believed god his faith was exchanged for god's righteousness so he became known as the lover of god oh, <laughs> hallelujah so being a friend of god is a lover of god oh hallelujah and so friendship is another word for love that's why she said in her sleep and i know it was didn't come through her intellect yeah it came through the from the spirit of god through her spirit and she spoke it out asleep that uh, sunday night after uh being up and traveling for many many hours that day because we had come all the way from spain mm -hmm. uh, to atlanta uh, so yes she was right because the holy <laughs> spirit is right uh, the holy spirit's always right friendship is another word for love. love okay now what i want to talk about next is that it's the covenant that connects us to god and that with friendship and so the blood covenant with the covenant uh the old was first start with the old covenant uh and that connected uh, the people to god through covenant and that's a vertical relationship a vertical relationship but what's interesting that the same covenant is what connects us to each other and that's a horizontal that's a horizontal connection, uh, one with another, horizontal. Okay, so the vertical is between one person mm -hmm, and God. Mm -hmm. That's vertical and horizontal. And all of that's based on covenant. Uh, and, and we're going to see in this study, it's real important to have that covenant relationship. And if... if oh, yeah, you know, that sounds like the cross to yeah, me. Yeah, it sounds exactly like the cross. There's a <laughs> vertical beam and a beam, horizontal, horizontal beam. beam and they have to be lined up but it's real uh, easy to get things out of an alignment now if you get things out of alignment it it, it rocks everything it becomes more like an x than a cross mm -hmm. straight up it has to be straight like that we can get things out of alignment uh and you might say oh i love god i love god but uh, but i hate my brothers or i and, and see that, that puts things and it doesn't just affect your relationship with god it it affects the everything it gets everything we have to have things in alignment and the way we have to be in alignment we have to love our brothers and sisters and we have to love god and, and as long as we're loving god and loving our brothers and sisters then those beam those beams are perfectly in alignment mm -hmm. vertical and horizontal but it's easy to get them out of alignment and i want you to read a couple of verses that gets them out of alignment and then james 4 4 it says you adulteresses 
And that's what it is when we we have uh, an affair or get connected with the world, then that is uh, adultery, a spiritual adultery. And it says, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world, whew, hallelujah, makes himself an enemy unto God. Okay, so your vertical uh, a lot, your vertical beam gets out of alignment if we're loving the world. You cannot love two things. You cannot love the world and God, mm -hmm. and that throws that out of kilter, and and then it also throws the horizontal line out. Mm -hmm. But you could also uh, have things wrong or out of alignment between your relationships with people. And so let's talk about that verse. Okay, first John. First John four. First John four twenty. If someone says, I love God, yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Okay, mm, okay. Mm, mm, so mm. What, what we're seeing here is it's important to keep our relationship uh, with God. That's the vertical beam. And uh, it's also to keep our relationships right with the uh, people, with the Christians, other Christians. And we can get those out of alignment very easy and it affects everything. And you might say, oh, I, I love God. I love God. There's a lot of people who love God and hate other Christians uh, because those mm -hmm. other Christians don't believe the same way they do. They don't go to the same church. They don't are not in the same denomination. Any of those kinds of things uh, messes everything up. And we've got to keep everything uh, in alignment. Mm -hmm. Now, when we have, uh, I want you to just think there are all kinds of groups of people on the earth and God makes covenant with people and that separates them out with, with certain groups. And he makes a covenant. And when he made a covenant, then he calls those people, he calls those people. Oh, they were called people mm, until mm. They, be, they had a covenant with God. Mm. Then they are called out people, Ooh, special yeah. people. And, until then, they're just the nations. They're just the groups. They're just the... Uh, the Gentiles, they're, 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 they're not his called out people. I want you to read this. Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6. And this is a really good message, really good. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Okay, so, Woo, hallelujah. so God made covenant with them, and now he's calling them a people. They're really a special called out people. But that concept goes to the New Testament, and it refers to you and me, and this is in First Peter. Sherry, read, read this. First Peter 2.10. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, now, you I probably always thought you were a people, but you weren't a people according to what God says until you accepted Jesus Christ. Okay, Sherry, go ahead. I have a word. Okay. The Holy Spirit would say unto us tonight, surely I have chosen you. You are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood. I have called you to come out of the world and be next to me. I have called you to myself. I have called you beautiful. I have called you wonderful. I have called you out to call you in to prosperity, Hallelujah. into peace, into hope, into faith. I have called you out of the world that we might be together, that we might commune together, that we might fellowship together, 
and I will be yours and you will be mine, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank I received you, that word. That was that was Thank beautiful. You, Jesus. Now, Thank you, Jesus. we saw that we would think we were always people, but we were not people according to God's definition. We were not people and we're not special called out people until we had covenant with him. Mm -hmm. And that was back in the old covenant. If they weren't in covenant with, uh, with God, they were just called Gentiles or the nations or uh, different things, but not people, it's not special. Okay. But now we're going to the new Testament where we're again being called out people, uh, uh, called out people, <laughs> special called out people to do God's will on the earth. Amen. Now, Amen. Uh, and this comes out in Matthew chapter uh, eight, uh, 16. And uh, basically Jesus is walking with his disciples in uh, Caesarea Philippi. Now Caesarea Philippi is a city and it's north of the Sea of Galilee, and it's at the foot of Mount Hermon, Mount Hermon. And now the thing about Mount Hermon, it's a rock. And on the rock, mm -hmm. on the base on that rock uh, are temples, temples of the Greeks and temples of the Romans. And, and so uh, Jesus makes this incredible statement, and I'll bring it out in just a moment. But he, first of all, he says, who do you say that I am? And uh, they said a bunch of things, weird things. But but then uh, <laughs> uh, Peter gets a revelation. Uh -huh. And he gets a revelation. That, and he said uh, in 1616, Matthew 16, verse 16, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So he's talking about revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it to you. And I'm going to build my church upon this rock. Now, a lot of people say, well, uh, he's talking about Peter being the rock. But no, Peter is the stone. And so if you th think about where they were, they there were the stone temples on the base of the big rock, Mount Hermon. And he's saying, I'm going to call you out. You're going to be my ecclesia, ecclesia, uh, the called out ones, and I'm going to build on the rock. And, and so it's just like we, he could see those temples, those stone temples of the Greeks and of the Romans around them on the rock of, the, of Mount Hermon. And, and he said, I'm going to build like that, uh, my called out ones, so there'll be stones, and we're all living stones. And we're going to be built on the revelation of yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'll have Sherry to read this. Matthew 16, 18. Okay. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overpower it. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what he's saying here is not he's going to build it on Peter. No. No. But it would crumble if he was building his church on Christ. He's... The church uh, in the Greek is ecclesia, and it means the called out one. So we're the called out people of God because we have a covenant relationship with God. We are the called out people, just like in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. In those old days, the people who were called out were the Israelites, the descendants of Israel because of the covenant. It wasn't because they did anything better than anybody else. They may not have been as good as other people. Mm -hmm. So it had nothing to do with how good they were. It was about the covenant. God made the covenant. It wasn't Amen. about what they Amen. had done. And so the covenant is what caused them to be special called out people. And the other people were simply called nations and Gentiles and other other kinds of groups, but they were not called God's called out people. And today it's you and I, we are part of the called out people and God's going to build us up as living stones Hallelujah. and we're going to be built just like the temples, uh, those stone temples were being built on the foundation of Mount Hermon, which is the big rock. 
Well, we're going to be built on the uh, revelation, and that's the rock of revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're being built on Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. No, I'm, I'm excited yeah. about <laughs> I'm excited about this. Amen. This is important. Amen. We need to know what a true friend is. And, and, and true friendship is. Friendship is not based on emotions. It's a it's a based on hearts, on uh, mm -hmm. on what God puts in our heart. Well, we and, have a heart relationship. With and God. I believe that God has knitted our heart with each one of you. Yes. That you're in our heart. And I believe that we're in your heart. And that I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for each one of you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Okay. So now we have laid out the principles here. And I want to start now talking about some implications. How do you build relationships? Who do you build relationships with? It's people who love God and obey his commands. Amen. They have a covenant relationship with him. Those are the people that we can relate to. And uh, I, I want you to know that the world wants to label people. They want to put them in categories. So when you meet somebody, and this is the way the world operates, when they meet somebody and they begin to have a dialogue with them, see when they first meet, when, the, when two people come together, and, and and they begin to meet and talk, then uh, you're thinking, who is this other person? What what do they believe? What do they do? And then as they begin to say uh, something, uh, and the first person wants to categorize the other person, and, and then you don't have to take them for who they are. You just know you can, if uh, let's say somebody comes up to you and they want to know what your denomination is and Oh, you're a Baptist and I'm a Methodist or I'm an Assembly of God or I'm a Church of Christ or I'm this. Or okay, then you put them in categories. Mm -hmm. And the reason people put others in categories is they want to pigeonhole and say, well, I know all about you. I know what you believe and I I'm more important than you. And I once I categorize you and label you, that's what the world does then uh, that makes you less and it makes me more. If I know who you are and I can categorize you, put you in a category, put you in a little pigeonhole, uh, then I don't have to think about you anymore. Uh, if, if that's the way the world thinks. If, if uh, the two people come together and they talk for a little while and then you find out, oh, you're a different denomination and I, uh, that denomination has all of these problems. Uh, they don't believe right about this and that. Then I I, I say though well, they appear to me to be less important than I am. We can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, that but that's the way the world operates. They try to label people, uh, and, and no longer do they have to think about who they are, or what what kind what of what they need, what, or... what what's in their heart. They don't have to. Their thinking is over with. Once you label a person as somebody inferior to you. Then you just put them down and, and, and you see yourself as big and important and them little. And, and so you never think about them anymore once you categorize them, once you label them uh, as something. But the Bible has a lot to say against that kind of attitude. Amen. Let's hear what the Bible says. In Romans 14, 13, therefore let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother or sister's way. And then in John 7, 24, do not judge by the outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. In Matthew 7, 1, it says, judge not lest you be judged. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance are at the height of his statue, because I have rejected him. For God does not see a person um, with outward appearance, but the Lord looks upon the heart. Okay, so how are we supposed to relate to people? It's by the heart, and it's not by our natural thinking, our natural sight, 
Uh, it's by what's in people's heart. And, and so if, if you come to me, I have to continue to receive you as a brother or a sister Amen. in Christ. And I have to continue to, to think about what's in your heart, what's in my heart, and how can we relate to each other. And, and so it's an ongoing process. But the world, see, when you come to the world, uh, they've already they've already looked at you and they've already made some, uh, they've categorized <laughs> you by how tall you are, how fat you are, how thin you are, how young you are, how old you are. And once they label you, then they diminish you in their mind and they, and they make themselves more important in their mind but we cannot label, uh, we cannot label one another because our relationship is based on the covenant. Now, when did the covenant begin? Well, it began at the Last Supper when Jesus said, this is my blood. Take mm. it and drink of it. I want oh, you, hallelujah. Want you hallelujah. to read this verse. In, in Matthew. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Oh, hallelujah. So, so it's the blood covenant. So it's the blood covenant. It began right there on, uh, on that last supper, the night before he was crucified. He said, my blood's being poured out here. This is my blood. And so when we partake of, of, communion. of communion, see, we're partaking of that covenant. And that's that's giving life to our relationship with him. Now, it's not just between you and the Lord, though, because he said, I'm giving you this blood to all of you, and you drink, drink this blood, drink all of it. And so everybody participated, mm -hmm. all of the disciples uh, drank that blood and ate that bread. Oh hallelujah. oh, hallelujah. That's Here's one in Corinthians. Let's yes, read that. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and 17. It's the cup of blessing which we bless not a sharing in the blood. Sharing in the, Ooh, in did the you blood. A sharing in, in the, the blood. blood of Christ. It's the bread which we break, not a sharing. Sharing. In that? the body of Christ. Okay. So we've all shared in the same blood and in the same bread. And so how can you label me and say, oh, he doesn't, you know, he, he's too old or he's too uh, weak or he's too this or he's too that. Mm. No, you don't label us. Don't label the people you meet. Have an excitement about people you meet and not try to categorize them and label them as inferior to yourself. Mm. Since there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Okay. Hallelujah. So we may be in different denominations. We may be in different congregations. We may believe different things. But we have covenant oh, relationship God. with each other because we have covenant relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I amen. tell you, this is an exciting message. Yes, yes. And it kept, it keeps us having in line, in line so we can be in alignment line with our brothers and sisters and in alignment with our Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. And otherwise, otherwise we are in trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So that's when the covenant began. Now we're going to move to my final point. So I'm bringing this to closure. And unity comes out of covenant. Ooh, hallelujah. There is no other basis for unity mm, than covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just think about relationships for a minute. Uh, there is a, you can have a relationship. It's all about covenant. You can have a relationship between you and the Lord. Okay. And that's based on covenant. A husband can have a relationship with a wife that's based on covenant. And so then they can oh, have yeah. unity if they have covenant. Now, Ooh, that's the reason that God said, don't be not yoked uh, unequally yoked, yoked with, with unbelievers, unbelievers because there's no covenant between them. There will never be, be unity. unity 
there. Oh, wow. wow. And, you know, wow. <laughs> we had uh, uh, mm. a man and a woman come to us recently, and they were living together and not in marriage, and they were fighting, fussing and fighting. And uh, and one thing uh, a pastor said to them, don't, don't live, move in together and be together. Uh, don't be intimate together until you're married. And they just uh, flat uh, disobeyed what he said. And then they had all kinds of problems because you cannot come into unity without covenant. And marriage oh, is a covenant. covenant. And then you can have unity. Oh, wow. And a wow, lot of people wow, don't wow. understand that. So you can have a real... There is a covenant relationship that you can have with God. There is a covenant relationship that you can have between husband and wife. There is a, a covenant relationship that you can have between and among believers. Uh, but, mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. going to bring unity. But if you're talking about uh, putting people down and uh, building yourself up, that's not unity. You don't have unity in a case like that. It's when we prefer one another that we can have unity. And, and and praise God. So I want oh, you to read a couple of verses here. First Corinthians 1.10 Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree. All agree. All. Let me emphasize that again. Okay. All agree. Yeah. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. And you know, he didn't say, all you Baptists, uh, you agree with each other, and all you Pentecostal, you agree with. No, he said, you all agree. That's everybody. That's mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. denominations. All you all agree. Come into unity. Okay. First Peter 3, 8. This is from the Amplified uh, Translation. Finally, all of you be like-minded. All of you be like-minded. That's all of you. Not just the Pentecostals or the Baptists or the Evangelicals or the or this or that. No, it's all of you. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Be like-minded, united in the spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, and compassionate toward each other as members of one household and humble in the spirit. That's all of us. It's not 50% mm, mm. and 50% believing over here. It's not. It's all of us come together in unity. Amen. And, and Amen. there's a final point I, I want to make. And so if you don't have unity, there's going to be all kinds of facts. I have a scripture. And if men and women are trying to live together uh, like a family, like a husband and wife, but they're not married, they're going to have problems. You've got to have covenant, covenant relationship. Then you can have a strong marriage. You can have unity. And there's another verse, and it's uh, uh, Psalm 133. 33. That, that's <laughs> where God... Come, pours out pours out the blessings he commands yes. blessings where there is unity mm. well where does the unity come from it comes from covenant so the blessings flow out of covenant, covenant. through unity did you have another one no that was it okay so <laughs> we came up with the same thing at the same time now i want you we're all in the united states uh well no not all of us i apologize for that but but I want you to see something here, uh, what they said about the pre, uh, what's that? The preamble of the Constitution of the United mm -hmm. States. It's an interesting phrase here because they caught this concept, and basically the Constitution is an agreement or a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a covenant. It's the covenant that we base this nation on, and I I want you to see what the real purpose why they developed a constitution for this nation. And I've underlined these words. I want Sherry to emphasize them when they get there. Right. But this is the preamble. Is that right? The mm. preamble of the United States Constitution. 
we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. Oh, this is the reason they wrote a constitution for this nation. A and th is that we might have a more perfect union. You, you want to mm. think about why, if you want to have a more perfect union in your family, base it on the covenant. Okay, but this is just the reason they developed a constitution here in the United States that we might have a more perfect union. I'll go ahead and let you read the rest of it. Establish judgment, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Okay, so why did there, there were lots of really good reasons in there why they wrote a constitution, and this was hundreds of years ago. They, they had a lot, but these founders of the, of the United States of America, they understood you have to have a covenant in order to have a more perfect union. People have to be in agreement with that covenant. See, there's a lot of people out there now today that uh, are not covenant minded. And, and mm. so they want to break the union apart and they want to destroy right. the, the country because they don't understand covenant and they don't have covenant. But the founding fathers of the United States understood covenant and they knew we need a constitution that that was their co covenant they put in place so that they might have a more perfect union that's the mm -hmm. unity that you mm -hmm. want in your marriage remember to relate it back to covenant a marriage mm -hmm. covenant mm -hmm. okay thank you for yeah, being here today yeah. i'm going to turn it over to sherry and see if she has something well to say. It says a union is a is the product of, of covenant between God and the believer and between husband and wife and among God's people. And that is that's you know true friendship. And as we become friends of God, then we are to become friends with each other and um and receive um uh, all believers. Uh if if a person believes in Jesus Christ and they've cut covenant with him through the blood, then then they are my friend. Uh, 